Hey, historians. Hey, have you ever found yourself in a moral dilemma? Well, I'm kind of in one right now. You see, my friend Mia and I, we found this incredibly realistic yet surprisingly fake mustache. Now, I already have a mustache, a real one. Mia doesn't, so she thinks she should get the fake one, you know, to be more like me or play a prank. I don't know. But I wouldn't mind having it myself. Kind of like adding it to a collection. What do you think? How should we go about deciding who's right in this situation? I'm right. Many people base their ideas of right and wrong on their country's laws or their religion. For example, Jewish people often turn to their sacred text, the Torah. Now, I wonder if the Torah might offer any wisdom on fake mustache disputes. <laughs> Let's find out. Wait, 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 wait. Before we get started, let's take a quick peek at today's lesson objectives. We will explain the major tenets of Judaism and their source, compare Jewish beliefs with those of earlier civilizations, then wrap up by describing the influence of their beliefs on modern religions. Are you ready, historians? Judaism is not only about old stories from ancient Israel, it's a vibrant, living tradition that influences the way millions of people around the world live their lives. From celebrating holidays like Hanukkah and Passover, to following dietary rules known as kashrut, Judaism shapes everyday life for many in a lot of ways. And it all started thousands of years ago. See, Judaism has a special belief system and practices based on the Hebrew Bible and other Jewish texts. The most important idea in Judaism is the covenant, which is a promise. Now, imagine having a pinky promise with your best friend. But this promise is between the Jewish people and God. As you probably recall, according to Jewish beliefs, it all started with a man named Abraham. And they believed God promised to take care of Abraham and his family. And in return, they would stay loyal to God. Now, the Hebrew Bible, the Torah, is really important in Judaism. It includes the first five books of what Christians call the Old Testament. It's like the ultimate guidebook for Judaism filled with stories, laws, and teachings, including a moral code with commandments, such as no stealing. Jews believe that God himself gave these teachings to humans. Judaism is full of laws that tell people how to live, from being kind to others to following certain rituals. These rules come from the Torah and other texts. Now, the Torah has lots of laws on different things, like how to treat each other, how to celebrate, even what food to eat. Or maybe we can find something about mustaches, too. <laughs> well, another important scripture is the Talmud, created back when the Jews were living in Babylonia. It covers many topics laws, history, and more. Now, this book helped shape Judaism into what it is today. Let's check out how it differed greatly from religions found in other civilizations of the time. Now, back in the day, most civilizations thought there were a bunch of gods and goddesses, like a big, powerful team, handling everything from the sun to the sea. Remember, this belief is called polytheism. But the Hebrews shook things up and said, nope, there's only one true God. Now, this means they believed in monotheism, or the belief in one God. Now, the Jews also believed all other gods that people worshipped were fake, or false idols, as they called them. Talk about a unique perspective. Now, picture this, a super special list, kind of like a recipe to live a good life with 10 important rules to live by. Now, these aren't just any rules. They're the Ten Commandments, and they were super important to the Jews. Now, this list included awesome advice, like treating your parents with respect. I mean, imagine getting extra brownie points for clearing the table without being asked. <laughs> to not taking what's not yours. So, no sneaking your friend's favorite pencil. Now, what's interesting is that not all ancient civilizations had such a clear-cut moral code in their religions. It's kind of like the Jews had a unique guide to being a good person, while others 
we're still figuring out the rules. Stuff like that comes in handy at times. I mean, like the disagreement with Mia about the fake mustache. Remember that really important pinky promise we talked about before? That was the covenant that the Hebrews believed they had with God. They promised to follow God's rules, and in turn, God would keep them safe and bless them. Cool, huh? Now, other ancient civilizations had different relations with their gods. For example, remember how they offered sacrifices in Mesopotamia in exchange for their gods' favor? Well, the Jews believed they earned God's favor simply by being a good person. Now, how do you think these different beliefs affected how each group lived their lives? The Jews also believed that God spoke to them. Yeah, they thought important notes from God were sent through prophets like Moses, who Jews believed delivered the Torah from God and led them from slavery in Egypt. Now, these prophets were like messengers delivering God's news straight to the Jews. These messages could have been anything, ranging from a warning about the weather, like a great flood, to guidance on how to live. Now, this was pretty unique because other early religions didn't have this cool God mail system. Well, one topic the Torah doesn't go into a lot of detail on is the afterlife. Now, it mostly refers to it as the dark place called Sheol. Religions in Egypt and Mesopotamia had their own thoughts on life after death. Egypt's version was much brighter, while Mesopotamia's was an even gloomier place. Now finally, imagine having a special day each week just to chill out and think about all the awesome things in life. Sounds pretty great, right? Well, that's exactly what the Jews did. They had this cool practice called observing the Sabbath. Now on the seventh day of the week, they take a break from work, kick back, and focus on worshiping God. Kind of like a weekly mini vacation dedicated to being thankful that other civilizations just didn't have. Now imagine being the big sibling that your younger brothers and sisters look up to. Now that's kind of what Judaism is like in the world of monotheistic religions. It's had a huge impact on two of the world's biggest religions, Christianity and Islam. Now, picture this like a game of follow the leader. Christianity and Islam have borrowed some cool ideas from Judaism. Just like you might copy your older sibling's style or the way they do things because you think it's cool, these religions have done the same with Judaism. Take polytheism. The Jews flipped that concept completely. Instead of a team of gods, they believed in just one God who influenced everything. Now, this view is common worldwide now, as several other religions, particularly Christianity and Islam, worship only one God. In fact, all three worship the same God. You know what else? Both Christianity and Islam have been influenced by the Torah and the Christian's Old Testament, and it is still used today. Found in the Old Testament are the Ten Commandments, the moral guides we talked about, thou shalt not steal, and so on. The commandments are foundational for both Jews and Christians, and influenced a similar set of guides for Muslims. Okay, so we've seen a lot of similarities, but this is where the three religions really go their separate ways. It's the concept of a Messiah, or Savior. Now, Jews believed that a Messiah, or Savior, will come to bring about a time of peace and prosperity to the world. Christians believed that Jesus Christ was the Messiah, and worship Him. And Muslims think that Jesus was a prophet and call him Messiah in the Quran, their sacred text, but believe a Messiah will come someday. Now, one final tie between the three of these is the day of worship and rest, or the Sabbath. The three are alike, but different. In Judaism, that is Saturday, or Shabbat, the Sabbath. Many other religions have a day of worship as well. For most Christians, it's Sunday. And for Muslims, the day of worship is called Jummah and it's on Friday, but it's not necessarily a day of rest. Well, this lesson kind of helped with the mustache. We decided to share it. We thought it would be the right thing to do. Mia gets it first. Next time, we take a look at some other cool ancient civilizations in Western Asia and their influence on the rest of the world. Well, until then, historians, 
Keep uncovering the past and looking to the future. And remember to always be clever. Hey.